Hey guys, welcome back. It's Jen with Happy Humble Home. Before we jump into this video where we're going to be making kombucha, make sure that you go ahead and click that subscribe button if you haven't already and be sure to ring that bell so that way you know anytime that I upload a video here on Happy Humble Home. All right, let's make some kombucha. Hey guys, so like I said, we're going to be making up some more kombucha today. This is something that I've been making, I guess, for the past several months, not just very long. I'm not a very, very seasoned kombucha maker. But basically, you can see here where my scoby is, so I need to make up another batch because I guess I do what they can call a batch brew, where I just make up a batch and then I will let my scoby sit in um, some of my kombucha. And I'll just leave it sitting like this for until I get through all the bottles. So for about a week or so. And then I will pour fresh and then I'll mix up my fresh brew tea, add it to this. And then I'll just kind of continue that process. So that's where we're going to jump into this process. There is ways that you can make your own SCOBY at home. And or if you know somebody that brews their own kombucha, you could probably try to get a SCOBY off of them. That's how I came about it. One of my friends told me about her making kombucha so she showed me how to do it and she gave me one of the layers of her scoby because she needed to split it anyways and a little bit of the starter kombucha and that's how we've been keeping it going if my kombucha gets if my sorry if my scoby gets too thick i'll either compost it or i will save it and give it to a friend if they if they're wanting a scoby to start with but I'll talk a little bit more later in the video about how to split the SCOBY if it needs to be. But right now, all I'm going to do today is I just need to pour this up for the first fermentation. So what I have here is the way that I brew my tea. I feel like a lot of people do different ratios. But the way that I do mine is I do a gallon of water, four regular size tea bags of black tea, and I do three-fourths cup sugar. Some people do an even cup but I just I don't I just don't tend to make my tea that sweet because you definitely do need sweet tea and of course as you're sitting here feeding your scoby it will have less sugar <coughs> content because your scoby's eating the sugar so that's the way that I make this tea is one gallon of water three-fourths cup sugar and then four of the basic black tea bags or basic size if you use like the really big size tea bags then I'd probably just do two um, I just let it, I don't really watch how long it simmers on the stove or how long it brews on the stove. I just let it come to a boil. I let it boil for a few minutes and then I just turn my eye off and I let it come down to temperature before I take it off the eye. So it is still kind of simmering longer and brewing longer. Then once it's cooled down for a little bit, I'll go ahead and take my tea bags off or take my tea bags out of my tea and I'll let it cool the rest of the way. One thing you want to do is you do want to make sure that your brew tea is room temperature before you try to put it in with your SCOBY because if I'm not mistaken, the heat can mess up your SCOBY and it can kind of kill it. So you don't want to do that at all because the SCOBY is, you know, the symbiotic culture of yeast and bacteria. So we want to keep all of that healthy and we don't want to burn it up with hot tea. So you can see here, I just have an old pickle jar that I've let air out and wash really good to get that pickle smell out of. And so we're just going to pour this up today. Oops. It's probably a little bit much usually I don't put quite it's easier to see here without the bubbles usually I don't put quite that much um, that's one reason I only do about a gallon of water I know some people that do like four or five um, they'll do between four and five quarts depending on how big their jar is but for a gallon size jar since you're having to already start with the mother or not with the mother sorry since you're already starting with a little bit of that kombucha starter in there then it obviously does take up more volume so that's why I just kind of stick with my gallon and sometimes if I have a little extra tea then I'll just pour it over into tea into sweet tea that my kids will drink for a little bit and I'll just water it down so it's not so sweet um, but I just made a huge mess 
so yeah but anyways so now we're just going to make sure that our jar is good and clean for right now and then we're going to simply put some kind of like coffee filter and a rubber band on this you can use like this is just like a little um cotton dishcloth type thing that i'll just rubber band it and then you want to leave it setting in a close in a dark space for typically i leave it three to five days sometimes i've left it as long as seven days but this is going to be our first ferment because I'll, i always do two fermentations one is to actually make the kombucha itself and then my second ferment is the one where I kind of flavor it up with fruit juices or fruits. Um, but this first ferment is just making the kombucha itself and that way the goby can feed off the sugars and the tannins that's in the tea that you brewed. So we're gonna just set it in a dark cabinet and I will check back in in about three to five days. All right, hey guys, welcome back. So it's been about probably four days since I last poured up this kombucha that y'all seen me pour up. So it's just been sitting in the cabinet like this. And now I'm gonna go ahead and get ready to start my second fermentation, which is where I'll add any like fruit juices or anything like that. Today I'm gonna actually be using pineapple in it. I'm going to do up a pineapple basil, which seems to be my favorite combination so far but you can use any kind of, you can either use like a fruit juice. If you haven't watched my videos on me using juice or me using my juicer, I'll link that video in the little iCards for you to see there. And then you could use whole fruit. Um, the one thing is depending on how wide your mouth of your jar is for whole fruit, it may be easier for something like this if you use juice or something like that instead versus this is going to be a little bit easier to get the fruit out once you're done with your kombucha or to strain it out if you prefer not to pour it with the juice still with the fruit still in it but i'll cut them just small enough that it will be fine to get out you just got to do like the little make the water come out and it'll usually force the fruit out pretty good or just cut it really small either way works um, like i said i've used black tea for my kombucha brew and when i poured it in you could tell that my scoby was kind of sunk and then it over a few days it just floated up you can i don't know how hard it's to see on camera but you can see all the, like the scoby and stuff forming the little lines it's really hard to see on camera but anyways that's what we're gonna do we're gonna get this strained up so usually i just go ahead and cover that back up for a second. So we're just gonna go ahead and put our fruit in here. Like I said, this particular one, I'm just kind of eyeballing how much fruit I want. There's really not a rhyme or reason for it. It's just kind of however fruity you want it. So I just cut this pineapple up. And like I said, I'm gonna do pineapple basil. I don't have any of my fresh basil because it's winter time. So, but what I do have is some like Cuban, yeah, Cuban, I don't know, actually this isn't basil. So I'm going to actually, usually I'll do pineapple basil is my favorite, but this is actually oregano that I forgot, like Cuban oregano that I had. So we're going to try pineapple oregano, but the pineapple basil is a really good combination. Um, so we're just going to take and put in a little handful there and then i'm going to go ahead and do the same thing with these two jars real quick There you go. So this one I'm just going to do just pineapple in. Like I said, I've never tried the pineapple oregano. I just, it dawned on me as I was, so 
sitting here filming this that that was not basil that I had. I do have like dried basil that's already kind of powdered up or the leaves that I could put in there, but I already have this pulled out. So we're just going to use it and see how it tastes because that's kind of the fun thing with it. You can just kind of add whatever you want. I'm probably going to go ahead and add some ginger to this plain pineapple. We'll see. I'll see how many jars get poured up. So what we're going to do is we're just going to take this and then we're going to grab a funnel and then I like to have a small strainer to go in my funnel just to help strain out anything like any little scoby pieces that might come off in my kombucha. So usually I'm going to actually set this down in the sink and make it easier. So let's go ahead and get this poured up. Okay, so you can see kind of how full I filled it. I don't fill it all the way up just because I want it to be able to have room to ferment and stuff still. So if you fill it up much more than that, it won't have very much room. So that bottle's done, and we're just going to set this again in the cabinet for about four or five, actually for about three or four days. Usually I just have it sitting in the same cabinet that I have this setting in. And then since I like my kombucha cold, I'll just pull it straight from the cabinet put it in the refrigerator, which will also slow down fermentation process. And then I will drink me some kombucha. And my kids actually, two of my kids like to eat the fruit in this kombucha. So you can add the fruit in your compost. If you like to eat it, then you can eat that as well. But that's pretty much the gist of kombucha. It's very simple and very basic to make. You, I've heard of people using like green tea instead of black tea in their first ferment. I've never actually tried that. Some people say it would work. Some people don't. I don't really know. I just stick with the black tea and we'll just make it simple. One of these days I may get a little creative, but for this point, we're not. So we're just going to go ahead and get these other two jars pulled up, poured up other. And then as you can see, the way I pour it, I just make sure my hands are clean and then I just kind of hold the scoby back when I'm pouring the kombucha. just want to make sure your bottles are all wiped off good and I typically use leave about a cup or two I'll probably pour just a little bit off and just like a regular glass and drink it right now because you definitely can drink it after the first ferment it's fine it just won't have that fermentation as much it won't like be fizzy like this will because this helps feed off the sugars and all that is in your juice so I'm just going to set these up here in the cabinet and then like I said, I'll pull in just a small glass or I'll pour me just a small glass of this to drink real quick while I already have it out. And then after about three or four days, I'll pull one of those out, put it in the refrigerator, let it get cold, and then I'll sip on my kombucha that way. Until that time, I'm just going to let this set. pour me just a little bit off here to just go ahead and drink because I haven't had any today and then I leave about that much for my starter for my next batch of kombucha and usually what I do is once I've drunk once I've put my 
the last bottle that I started in the cabinet once I have gone I filled up three bottles from a gallon today and typically what I'll do is once I open my last bottle or I put my last bottle in the refrigerator that's when I'll go ahead and start brewing this so that way it'll take me probably three or four days maybe to drink the kombucha because I typically drink like a small cup and then that's it I don't drink a whole lot more than that um, and then I'll just leave this sitting in my cabinet like this I'll just leave it sitting in my cabinet like this while my second ferment is happening and then when I get ready I'll just pour it up like I did at the beginning of this video and that's just the way I kind of brew my kombucha in the summer months this will ferment quicker so instead of being like three to five days it may be one to three days or something like that so just keep that in mind um, if you have any questions or anything make sure to leave them in the comment section below and as always thank y'all for watching and i will catch y'all next time on happy humble home